guys, so welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I'm going to show you guys how to make another really fun creature. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a rainbow stag. If you don't know what a stag is, it's basically just a different type of deer. Usually they're portrayed as male, but you're welcome to do a female. You just don't get to do the fun antlers. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, I think the first thing I want to work on for this piece is going to be the clay. Now before we do the face or the feet, we're going to have to make the antlers for the stag. So to do this, I drew out a basic shape of how I want the antlers to look. This is roughly how large the antlers are going to be, they're just going to be a little bit bulkier. Now as you can see, my design has four points to it. So for each point on the antler, we're going to cut a wire measuring that length. And I'm doing both wires at the same time, so you're going to double the measurement. And that's why I've got four wires laid out. Each one is a different measurement for a different point on the antler. So I'm going to take all four wires and I'm going to bundle them together, making sure all the points are facing the correct way. And then I'm going to take a thinner 20 gauge wire and wrap them all together. Now that I have a basic frame set up for my antlers, I can start covering it in clay. So I'm going to take strips of clay and I'm going to start covering up all the points and blending everything together. Now if you want, you can stop at this point, your antlers will look perfectly fine, but I want to add a little bit of a fantasy twist to it, so I'm going to take all the points of the antler and I'm going to twist the clay so it wraps around that wire and creates kind of a spiraling effect at the end. And then after that, I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 15, maybe 20 minutes. And while those are baking, we can start on the face. So I'm going to take my glass container and a piece of tin foil that I roughly shaped into how I want the face to be, and I'm going to push that on top of that and start covering it up in clay. Once our tin foil is covered, I'm going to cut off the extra clay that we have around it, and then I'm going to smooth the surface. And then right about now is when we need to add the antlers to the face. They've gone through the oven and have cooled to touch and they're ready to be worked with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to separate the antlers and remove all the extra wire that's connected to them. I'll leave a little bit, that way they can go deeply into the clay. And then I'm going to take both of those antlers and I'm going to push them into the clay where I want them to be. Now I'm going to add the eyes to the stag. I'm going to take two very small balls of clay and I'm going to push them into the face where I want the eyes to go. And then I'm going to take some small strips of clay to make the under eyelid. I'm going to blend that into the face and shape it how I want it. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the top eyelid. Now to make the mouth and nose of the stag, I'm going to start by taking two balls of clay and I'm going to push those on top of the snout. I'm going to blend these in and shape them, and this is basically going to be the upper lip. After I like how that looks, I'm going to take another ball of clay, slightly smaller, and I'm going to push that into place where I want the nose to be. I'm going to blend that in, and then I'm going to start shaping the nostrils with my tools. The last thing I need to do is add a little bit of fur detail to the face, so I'm just going to take one of my tools and kind of lightly scratch in some texture. And then I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45 minutes. Now we can move on to making the feet. To make the feet, I'm using a small wire frame. It's basically just a U shape and each end of the U is going to be one of the feet. I'm doing this so I have something to hold on to and I don't have to worry about bumping the clay while I'm adding it to the wire. Also, I can do both feet at the same time to try and make them as evenly as possible. So I'm going to cover up both of the tips of this wire and make sure that they're the size that I want to work with. For this piece, I don't want the hooves to be very large, I want them to be very delicate and the legs to be nice and long. 
For the bottom of the foot, I decided I wanted to give it a horseshoe for some reason, so I'm taking a very small strip of clay and I'm shaping it into a U shape and I'm pushing it onto the bottom of the foot. I'm going to sculpt this a little bit and add a little bit of texture and then we're going to start adding detail to the front of the foot. For the front of the feet, I wanted to add another fantasy twist to the piece, kind of like how I did with the antlers, but I wanted to do kind of more of a scale effect. So I'm going to take lumps of clay and create a little bit of a scale pattern to it. It'll kind of make it look like it has armor on it. Again, I'm not making anything super bulky because I want the feet to be very delicate. Once I was happy with all four of the feet, I'm going to put these in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 40 minutes. Once my clay pieces are done baking and have cooled to touch, I'm going to start on the painting. For the colors of this piece, I wanted the main body to be white and then I wanted to have rainbow accents. So I'm going to take all my clay pieces and I'm going to primer them with white. I want to do a few layers of this so I have a really pretty solid white color. After I've primered the face with a white paint, I'm going to start adding the colors for the rainbow onto the face and start blending them together. Now the white paint on the face has not fully dried at this point. I've done this on purpose so once I start blending my colors in, it'll lighten those colors up and create more of a pastel look. So for the colors that I'm adding to the face, I'm adding green, blue, purple, and then pink. The reason I'm doing the colors in this order is because the rainbow fabric that I'm going to use to make the body has these same colors in this particular order, so I wanted to try and match it. After I've done the rainbow effect on the face, I'm going to move on to painting the antlers, because when I painted the face white, I didn't paint the antlers white, that way I had something dry to hold on to. So I'm going to do a few layers of white over the antlers. After that's dried, I'm going to add some extra details to the face. So with the ears, I'm going to paint the inside parts of them white, and then I'm going to paint the eyes themselves black. Now besides having white and rainbow as my main colors, I also wanted to throw in a little bit of silver. So I'm going to take a silver modeling paint and I'm going to paint the under eyelids for the eyes and I'm also going to paint the nose silver. And then the last little bit of painting I have for the face is I wanted to add a little bit more detail to the antlers. They're just kind of plain white right now and I wanted to make them sparkle. So I'm going to be using a silver glitter paint to paint the ends of my antlers. Now this is the type of paint that dries clear, so all you'll see is the little bit of glitter afterwards. Now moving on to painting the feet, I've already got them primered with a white paint. This time it is dry, and I'm going to use the same rainbow colors that I used on the face to paint the scales that I have on the front of the feet. I'm going to keep these colors in the same order that I have on the face. And then one final touch for the feet is I'm going to take that silver modeling paint and I'm going to paint those horseshoes that I added. Now once all my paint is dried, I'm going to apply a layer of resin over everything to protect the paint. Again, I've said this before, if you guys don't want to use resin, use a spray-on sealant or some type of paint-on varnish. It'll help protect the paint, just not as well as resin. Okay, we can finally start on the sewing for the body. This is the pattern that I drew and cut out ahead of time, and this is what we're going to base the body off of. So I've got the main body, the head, the tail, and the legs all here. And then I've got the pattern for the belly. I've also got a smaller version of this, and this is going to be the pattern that we're going to use to make a strip of rainbow fabric going down the spine of the deer. Okay, so I've got all my fabric cut out. I've got a left and right piece for the main body, same thing with the neck, and then I've got my legs cut out. I've got a left and a right for the inside parts and the back pieces. Now you'll notice with the legs, I've left a little bit of extra fabric on the front and back of each leg. Now I've done this for two reasons. One, for the front of the legs, I'm gonna be sewing that with a sewing machine, so I need a little bit of extra fabric for that. And then for the back legs, just in case I made the legs too thin on my pattern, I wanted to leave a little bit of extra, that way if I wanted to, I can just trim it up instead of worrying about it being too thin. And then here's the rainbow fabric that I'm going to use for the piece. I've got the tail pattern cut out, the belly, and then the strip of fabric that's going to go down the spine of the stag. So the first sewing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the fronts of all the legs together. Thank you. 
After that, I'm gonna take our neck and I'm going to pin that to the body and then I'm gonna sew down that with one straight line. And that's all the sewing that I'm gonna do with the sewing machine. The rest of it's going to be hand sewn. So I'm gonna take the strip of fabric that we're gonna use for the belly and I'm gonna sew it to the body. So I'm gonna connect it where the neck is, going all the way down the body until we get to the very end. And I'm gonna connect both body pieces to this. And then for the tail, I'm just gonna fold our piece of fabric in half and then sew that closed and then flip it right side out and lightly stuff it. Okay, so now we have our clay pieces finished and majority of the sewing done. So we need to make a wire frame for our piece and then we can put everything together. To do this, you'll need three pieces of wire. One of them is going to be the length from where the head is all the way down the body and the length of the tail. That's going to be the spine. And then for the other two wire, you're going to measure up the front leg, going across the body to where the hip bone would be, and then you're gonna go all the way down the back leg. And that's gonna be the measurement for each of those wires. So one wire is going to be one front and one back leg. You're gonna use either your fabric or the pattern that you use to cut out your fabric as a guide to how to bend the wires. Once you have your wires shaped correctly, you're gonna take a thinner wire and you're gonna wrap these all together to make one wire frame. Now that you have the wire frame, we can start putting the piece together. So I'm gonna start by adding the feet to the end of the wire legs. To do this, you're gonna take the wire frame itself and the wire that's sticking out of the foot that you made, and you're gonna wrap those together with a thin 20 gauge wire. After you've done that to all four feet, we can move on to flipping our fabric right side out and putting it onto the wire frame. So you're going to take your wire frame and you're going to run all the wires for the legs through the holes of the legs on the fabric piece. Now you're going to take your glue and you're going to glue the fabric all the way around the base of the hoof. After that's dried, you can move on to taking your needle and thread and sewing up the back of all the legs. And then after they're sewn up, you can start stuffing them. And then after you're done with the legs, you can move on to adding the tail and the head to the piece. Now originally I was going to have a wire running through the tail, that way it could be posable, but I found it was making the back end of my stag shape a little funny, so I ended up cutting that off and we're just going to be sewing the tail onto the back end. Now to attach the head, I removed the tin foil from the back of it so I had a nice open spot and I'm gonna pour some hot glue into that. I'm gonna take the wire that's for the neck and I'm gonna push that into place and hold it until the glue dries. After that, I'm going to take the fabric for the neck of the piece and I'm going to glue that around the base of the head. I'm also taking that one strip of rainbow fur that we're going to have going down the spine and I'm gluing it to the top of the head. So now we just need to stuff and close up the body. So I'm going to take that one strip of rainbow fur and we're going to sew the white fabric onto each end of it. And then one final little touch up, I'm gonna take a little bit more of my rainbow fur and I'm going to glue it to the sides of the neck, that way I hide my seams a lot better. Okay guys, and that's how I made a rainbow stag. I'm gonna have him up in my Etsy shop, so make sure to check the links down below for that. I also have a bunch of other creatures that are 25% off right now, so make sure to check that out too. Anyways guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's project. If so, leave me a like, subscribe, to all that fun stuff. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.